Hello, everyone, and welcome to this talk about who needs an API server to debug a Kubernetes cluster. I'm host about who. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this talk about who needs an API server to debug a Kubernetes cluster. I'm Jose, I'm a senior software engineer at Microsoft. Uh, the main question for this talk is, how will you debug a Kubernetes cluster if the API server goes down? Well, I will try to answer that question by running a couple of uh, demos. The first one will be to debug an API server issue using BCC and standard Linux tools. I will show what are the main difficulties of using those tools in a containerized environment. Then it will help me to introduce the local gadget project and run a game the same demo, but this time using local gadget. To finalize, I would like to share what is the roadmap and our plan for the local gadget project. Okay, let's start with the demo. Uh, here we have a cluster with one single node. Uh, it is running container D as runtime, and we have a couple of pods running on it. Everything's running okay. And let me SSH into the node. Okay, I would like to start this demo by showing how we can use BCC gadgets, BCC tools <laughs> to uh, to debug containers. So you know that if we execute execute like this, it will capture the event from the host itself and also for um, all the containers that are running in this host. Uh, if we want to filter this output, of course we can grab it, but it's not that efficient, of course, because we are collecting a lot of information from the kernel, sending it to user space to then grab only a couple of them. It's not the most efficient way. So uh, the BCC tools already provide us some examples, some uh, ways to to filter the event. It is possible to to run uh, to filter the name for the name of the command or the arguments of the command, but if for example, we are running a pod like this and we are executing a different exec system call in a, in our pod. We do, are not able to use those kind of filters to get uh, all the events happening in our container. What we can use is this option. Uh, we have been collaborating with the BCC upstream to introduce this option. The idea is to have an eBPF map that contains the list of the mount namespace uh, that represents the containers that we want to get the events. For, for instance, that when I, we deploy the trace, uh, the exec snoop program, the eBPF program will every for every event will check if the mount namespace of that event is in the list. If it is, then it will be forwarded to the user space and show to the user. Otherwise, the event will be discarded. That's most much more efficient because we are doing all the filtering in the kernel space and just sending the to the user space the information that is actually requested. And let's try to do it ourselves. And first of all, we need to consider that the 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 eBPF map needs to be pinned. So the only option that we have to provide is the um, is the the path where where the map will be pinned. So let's define it like file. It is perfect like this. And we run a, a game XX node, but this time we pass the minus a option. It will use that map to consider to discard or keep an event. As you can see, uh, we are not capturing an event. It is because uh, it is because the eBPF map right now is empty. Let's see it. Yeah, it is empty. And what we need to do is to put in there the mount namespace of our container. So I usually use PS3 to do that. Then I look for my container. It is our container in the... <laughs> Copy the PID, let's keep the PID. Okay, and now we need, with using the PID, we are able to extract all the 
namespaces for that bit. This is the information, the mal namespace is the one that we want to put in the EPPF map, but we need to do it in uh, in hexadecimal. And so I will run this command to transform it to hexadecimal and with the current endiness. And now let's update the map. So we are adding an entry to our map where the key is the mount namespace of our container and the value is not relevant because uh, we are just, the EBPF program will look if the mount namespace is in the, um, is, is a key of the map, of the, of the EBPF map. So we run it and once we run it, immediately we will start seeing the events because now all the events are not, are being captured, but not discarded because the map, the mount namespace ID is present in the, in the map. That's okay. What we were looking for. And for instance, now we can do the same for any other, uh, for any other BCC tool. Let's try to now to break, not fix, <laughs> first break our API server. We can now, we this now down. Uh, actually, all the containers are still running. Yep, we have all the containers running, but we are not able to access the API server. Uh, let's try with the, let me close this one. Uh, let's try it with uh, the logs. Chat. The logs of the API server container, and we run it. There is not too much information, but no. Let's see again. It is running. No, it is not running anymore. So, if it is being restarted, maybe we are seeing some logs about uh, resources. Let's try the out of memory um, tool. And let's see if this is the reason why the, um, the the container is being restarted. For instance, for this uh, kind of situation, uh, our filter, the filter I've shown before is not possible to be used because if the pod is the container is being restarted, uh, it will change every time the mount name space. So, by the time we added the money space in the map, the container will be already failed and restarted again. So that's the problem. The another problem that we have here is that uh, we are not able to filter by the name of the container, but we are directly using the mount name space, which could change about every time that the container is restarted. For instance, we here we capture the event. It is indeed being uh, killed because of out of memory. So if we check VI, we check uh, what is the configuration, we can see that the actual is was pretty simple. I just limited the memory that it can use. If we refix it, after fixing it, we don't have any more the, the limit here and get bots. Let's, oh, okay, it's running again. Actually, it's not running, but it's being created. Okay, now uh, let's continue with our presentation. Now it's running. Well, what we have seen, we need to, we saw, we saw that we need to manually retrieve the container information, the PID, we use PS3 to get the PID. Then we go to the proc directory to get the mount namespace, you know, ID. Uh, for this, for the filtering, it was, we were able to filter by container, but using the mount namespace. So it means that every time the container is restarted, we need to update the map and it is not possible for the cases like when the pod, the container is uh, restarting and restarting again because the mount namespace is changing and changing. And so it is difficult to do it manually. 
And for instance, it is if we want to do something like don't you know, get the socket or a container, you know that each container is running on a different network namespace unless it's using specific the host net, for example. Uh, so if we want to get a socket, we need to switch, move into the network namespace of that socket, of network namespace of that container, and then run our tools. So this is there is still a lot of things that we have to do manually. We are able, but you need a good background on Linux namespaces to do this. So for this, let me introduce you local gadget. Uh, the idea here is that allows you, the local gadget allows you to trace local container using eBPF. Uh, it's a single binary, statically linked, so it's, it's easy to install. Uh, the information, another problem we saw before is that we don't have the information on Kubernetes. We are at the level of bit. It is, I'm not saying that the BCC and the standard tools are not working correctly. I'm just saying that they we are using them in a different context for which they were created, they were stored. We are trying to adapt them to a different environment. So with, with local gadget, what we are trying to do is to uh, think in a tool that is aimed to be to work in a local in a containerized environment. Another feature thing that local gadget provides us is that it is possible to trace Kubernetes and not Kubernetes containers and the available tools. Some of them are comes from BCC and some other were developed by our team for some cases that use cases that we found and. Um, let me describe better how local gadget is working. We have three main tasks. The main one, of course, is collect the insights. Uh, that is the tracer are in charge of all these tasks. We need to enrich the data with the Kubernetes metadata, and then we would like to avoid making all those steps for filtering, manual filtering, and of course, being able to do it also uh, in the case, the container is restarting and restarting. Okay, regarding the tracers, this is a very simple example to run a trace. Uh, we are using, we are using the, the eBPF code from BCC or the BCC tools. We are using them, but we have wrote our own control play in Golan. It is because we will like to make it easy to be integrated in cloud native environment, which is where the most of the application are written in Go. So we we are right now defining this API for our tracers. So you have to define, for example, for the exec tracer, you have to define a config where mainly you have an eBPF map. You can already start thinking that it will be the map we are filtered for filtering that we were creating before manually. We have an enricher, which is an interface that can be, we will use to call every time we have an event that we want to enrich it with the Kubernetes metadata and of course the event callback. This is a pretty simple example. It is not having a map, defining a map or on an enricher because we want to make it very simple to show how a tracer can work and it can work independently without the enricher or the filterings feature. Here is an example of the output. Mm, we have the command and the PID, but of course we have all this information and we just, just printing those two. Regarding the container collection, the main two uh, task for the container collection is to enrich the event and to not and to not and also to notify us about the creation and deletion of the containers. Uh, everything starts here. Uh, we have the run C notify module that will notify us every time a container is created, created and deleted. It's a very important thing to specify that this is a synchronous call that is uh, allowing us to get this information when the container is being created, but it's not yet running. So this point this is very important because uh, we will be able to prepare everything to start tracing uh, the events 
uh, right before the containers are running. So we will not lose any event of this during the startup of the container. So every time a container is created, we get the ID, the and the PID, and we use a set of enrichers that we have to get more information about this container. The idea is to keep a list of containers with all this information. We are taking the Kubernetes metadata from the container runtime. Um, and we are, of course, getting all the, the Linux namespaces that we will use to then map with the with the events. For example, at the moment, the tracer have a new event that and it wants to it wants to enrich that event with the Kubernetes metadata. It will call the enrich API and we we pass in all also the mount namespace. With the mount namespace, we will be able to match what is the container related to that event, and then we can enrich the event with the Kubernetes metadata. This module, as I said, will also provide a notifications about the container added and removed using the container uh, structure that we have created here. So also this model as the tracer can be used in an independent way if you just need to have this kind of notification with all this information. The enrichers are optional. You can add all of them, or just a couple of them. We have uh, some others. For instance, our last module, the trace collection, it is using the notification about the container lifecycle because when user ask, for example, like this to run the exec, uh, to trace the exec system calls and passing this kind of filter, uh, they want to filter by the container name that's called my cont. So we will ask the trace collection to add a tracer for such a filter. If uh, by the time we ask this, the container is not yet created, then the eBPF map will a BBPF map will be created empty. But by the uh, when we receive the notification about a new container has been created, we check if the mount namespace of that container is a match matches the filter that we will ask. If it is, then we are we add the mount namespace in the eBPF map. This is exactly what we were doing manually before, but we are adding the automation that receiving the notification about the container when it is created and updating immediately the map. In this way, we are not, given that these events are synchronous and the added notification will arrive before the container start running, we will be able to prepare our eBPF map before we receive the first event. So when we really receive the first event, we will have everything in place to not discard the, the, those very first events and provide them to the user. Okay, this is uh, the internal, uh, those were the internal modules. If you want to know more about them, we have written a couple of blogs and we have more examples for each of them where that you can run easily. Uh, I just want to mention what are the use cases we have thought for local gadget. Uh, the first one, of course, is debugging using a without the API server, where we have seen that it is difficult and some things are not yet possible, at least using the BCC tools. That was the first thing that I uh, thought when uh, in a situation like this where the API server is down. Um, Another use case we have is, is that if you are implementing a tool that needs to get inside from the node, we can provide you two, two options. One will be uh, to include the local gadget binary in your container image and then run it, or you can use the uh, our modules and um, to just get maybe just the notification about the containers or you can also you can also just run the tracers. Again, I remember we are collaborating with the BCC repo to keep those uh, eBPF code updated and with the new features. And we have all only the rewriting the 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 control plane to be easily introduced, integrated with your code here. And the last use case will be observing and debugging containers also outside Kubernetes environment. So 
we are also able to trace all those containers that were not created via Kubernetes. Okay, let's run the second demo. Here, this time we, let me show you local gadget. We have those uh, options. Uh, the most, the first one I would like to show is the list of containers. We are able to show the list of containers and also with the Kubernetes metadata, we can you can see that we have support for lock, uh, container D, Docker, and it also tried to communicate with Cryo, but this is not available in this system. So it fails, but you can run it only for the runtimes that you need. And let's try to do the same we did before. For instance, a local gadget exec, and we want to, uh, we want to filter by the pod we executed before. So sorry, the pod uh, we created before, and this time we don't need to manually uh, get the mount namespace, the p, then the mount namespace. We can directly run the name of our container and to debug it. So the same here, the same like uh, this, we can also enrich this information, these events with the Kubernetes metadata. And you have here the namespace, the Kubernetes namespace, the name of the pod and the name of the container. Uh, now let me again prime the same issue we had before with the, with the, with the API server, break API server. And again, we are still are able to uh, get everything, even if the API server now is down, we still are able to continue debugging. And let's try to capture again, also the problem of out of memory trace, out of memory kill. And this time thought we are able to filter like this. Cube, API server, Sorry, gadget, local gadget. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm. Here we can just wait to get the same event. And as I mentioned, this event can also be enriched with the Kubernetes metadata. Okay. Mm, I think that's all for local gadget. I just would like to add that you can also snapshot socket, for instance, container name, uh, my pod. To get this information, manually getting this information with SS or NetSat, you will have to enter in the namespace of in the network namespace of the container to get this information because each name each container is running a different network namespace so this is something that is also local gadget doing for us avoiding that we are need to do all this extra work that i mentioned before okay i think that's all for the demo for local gadget i just want to add it one more thing, it is that uh, the the feature that we are able to capture the events at the very beginning uh, of the event, for instance, if we are running a Docker container like this, that is immediately failing because the nice, uh, the nice command is using a capability that is not in the, in the default capabilities of the Docker. So in this case, we are able to trace sudo. Capabilities. And again, here, here, here we are able to filter by, uh, uh, today it's not, <laughs> it's a day of the typo. 
and we are able to filter here by my container which is the name we don't need to wait uh, to use the mount namespace and because it will be changed every time so we don't care about the mount namespace changing every time that the that the the pod uh, the the container fails if i run again the container we can see that we are capturing also the caps that are used by Ryan C during the startup and we can see that nice here is the capability that is being denied that this is the reason why it is failing okay i think that's all and let me just finalize here just some notes about local gadgets about the demo uh, we were able to debug Kubernetes container even if the API server was down. We enriched that information with the Kubernetes metadata. There was no manual step, and we don't load the event. We don't load any event at the container startup. What is the future for local gadget? Uh, in our roadmap, we have now that we have all the information of the containers. Of the of Kubernetes, we would like to be able to also filter by the container source, for example, filter for all the containers in the Kubernetes namespace. And so that, for example, in the eBPF map, in that case, will be a list of mount namespaces. Or for the pod, the same, uh, the container name. Remember, it could be different, the Kubernetes container name from the one given by the runtime. And we would like to support non-Kubernetes containers created by all the runtimes. We are not supporting only Docker. And we would like to add more and more and more gadgets. We will start with the ones already available in Inspector Gadget. But if you are, if you have any use case that we want to share, we are open to listen. We would like to get people involved in this project. So reach us at Slack or in the repository. Thank you very much.